welcome to Kids Corporation. Yee dog. <laughs> I'm Isabella Powers, and I am so excited. Tinkerbell is going to teach me how to fly. She gave me some pre-flight instructions. I have to think of a wonderful thought, have faith and trust, but the number one thing is to believe. Oh, Tinkerbell, I do believe, I believe. I'm flying. I think I got it, Tink. I believe! <gasps> Tinkerbell, I really do believe, but maybe more pixie dust or practice next time? Hello, this is Isabella Powers and welcome to Kids Corporation. Today I'm with Michael. Michael Sheen, even. Michael Sheen. <laughs> For Dr. Griffiths, is he, how does he relate to your own life? Well, I think as a as a father, it's too easy to get wrapped up in work. You know, I've, I, as an actor, I'm, I'm I get the opportunity to work a lot, which is wonderful. But it does take me away from my daughter a lot, and so I have to be very careful that I don't spend too much time away from her because, you know, you can miss things so quickly. So um, it's really important to know that when I am with her as well, that you know you really are with someone, and you're not just sort of there but not quite there, like Dr. Griffiths. Yeah, you are a busy man. Do you have a three-page resume? <laughs> three-page resume. Yeah. Yeah, I've been very fortunate, and uh, I've got to work on so many different kinds of things, you know, like a film like this, and a film like Alice in Wonderland, and the Twilight films, and then, then other films that maybe are, are for a different kind of audience, like the, the Frost Nixon and the Queen, and that kind of stuff, so I've been very fortunate. Yes. Um, what do you like better, acting in front of a camera, or the, like, the voice recording? Um, I, well, I, both, are, they're very different things, you know, I like to be able to to jump around when I'm acting and move around and do things. So you can't do that when you're just doing the voice. You have to sit in a room and you've got the microphone, it's right there, and you know, to be able to record everything, you can't move around. So that's quite frustrating. But I do love to be able to do everything with, a, with your voice, so you can be much more animated and colorful and, and, uh, and dramatic. So both are good. While you're doing the re recording, do you see a screen or like stick figures of? No, it's just uh, you're in a in a in a sound studio and you've got the microphone there and you've got your script on a sort of music stand kind of thing, and then the director and the and the producers and the engineers are all in a little booth behind uh, behind a sort of window. So you and you sit there on your own and you have a glass of water and a pen and do lots of funny doodles whilst you're working, um, and that's it really. And you just sort of go like that. And sometimes you might have a screen, but in this case we didn't have anything to watch. There was nothing on the screen because they animate the characters once you've done the voice. How did you get the part of Dr. Griffith? I paid them a lot of money to let me do it. That's the good thing about getting lots of work is you've got lots of money to pay people so they let you work on their films. No, I got sent the script and, and Disney asked me if I'd be interested in doing it. And because I'm such a fan of Disney films and I've, I've loved watching them all my life and with my daughter, I thought it would be really exciting to be a part of it. And back to the recording, do you think it's easier or harder for the recording? Uh, well, it's easier in some ways because you don't have to learn all the lines. They're all written there for you and um, you get to you know, do it a number of times and it's just you. You don't have to worry about whether the camera's getting everything or if you're in the right place or you've hit your mark. Um, but it's, so it's easier in some ways, but it's also harder in other ways because you don't get to, uh, to, to act with your whole body, you know, and uh, it's just your voice. Well, thank you so much for your time. And this is Isabella Powers with Kids Corporation. See you next time. Bye. That was awesome. Well, we were going to do a story about giant rats, but instead, watch this. Here we 
are with the Band of Dog Party. Can you tell us your names and ages? My name's Gwendolyn Giles, and I'm 13. And my name's Lucy Giles, and I'm 11. So when did you decide to start a band, and what inspired you? We didn't really plan on it. It just sort of happened. Like, my sister, she started taking guitar lessons, and I started playing the drum lessons. And then a family friend, Zach Gooden, he came, and he was talking to my dad, and he's all, the girls play together, right? And my dad's all like, well, what, how do we do that? So we came over to our house, and we had the drum set in my room, and he, I just made up some drums for Surfing USA. My sister learned the chords, and we just took off from then. Since me and my sister were really little, we've always loved music, and music's playing around the house pretty much 24-7, and we've always liked singing, and it's probably one of our inspirations is, like, I used to watch Pee Wee Herman, and he used to sing all these songs on the television, and I was a baby laughing and watching it, and then also Somewhere Over the Rainbow by... Um, Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz was when I started singing. So, what inspired you for the name Dog Party? Well, um, when I was just really little, I've always loved dogs, like, so much. It's just, like, I just love them so much. We have two, and, I'm, and I know a lot about dogs. And so I know that we had to have dog in the name. And then we were just kind of, like, dog... Uh, fiesta there, or dog, whatever, and then my sister just said dog party, and then we're all, uh, okay, that's good, we can do dog party. So that's how it came, the name of our band. So do you have plans to add more members someday, or are you just gonna keep it just the two of you? Well, we're, are, we're kind of thinking of like having some people just play around, but not really just sticking in the band, like... Not really sure, actually. Like sort of like a guest star? Kind of. They might be in a dog suit or something. <laughs> do you write your own songs, and what do you write songs about? Um, Mostly, like, writing songs about, like, what happened, like if something bad happened at school that day, or friends being weird or anything like that. <laughs> do you have a lot of bad days at school? Um, I wouldn't say a lot, but a couple. Do you play live and do you enjoy it? Yes, we play a lot of live shows and we have a blast. Cool. So what was your recent show? Our recent show is at Old Ironsides. It's a bar. We just played there, um, I think, three days ago or two days ago at Old Ironsides. Gwendolyn, what's your favorite guitar that you have and what inspired you to start playing? Right now, my favorite guitar is a little silver tone I have, and I started playing when I was in fourth grade after playing the flute and getting braces. It was kind of hard on my mouth, so then I got a guitar for my birthday, and then I started taking a lot of lessons. What inspired you to start playing drums? Um, I started playing the drums... Because, I don't know, I just felt like that was the instrument for me. I really wanted to play an instrument, and I'm just all drums would be good. And so that's how I started playing the drums. So can you play a song for us? Sure. Speaking of dogs, can dogs surf? I know people can. 
Now let's go to a place where people can surf without the ocean. Hello, I'm Mackenzie Brown and I'm Kristen Richardson with Kids Corporation. Today we're interviewing the owner and manager of the newest action sports facility center called Dream Extreme located here in Elk Grove, California. Hello, what is your name and what do you do here? My name's Shane Carter. I am the owner and manager here at Dream Extreme. Great. Um, what is your job and what is your name here? Uh, I'm the manager here at Dream Extreme. My name is Zach Younger. Very cool. How did the whole idea of Dream Extreme come about? Uh, Zach and I come from a background of professional water ski stunt performers, and we love the extreme sports and wanted to create a facility that other people could participate and learn the sports and, and the industry that we're involved in. Now, of course, the most exciting thing is your flow rider. What exactly is flowboarding? Flowboarding uh, is riding on this surface here. What happens is we got two jets that blow three inches of water up over the top of this surface, which creates a sheet wave um, that is a consistent flow that allows you to essentially bodyboard or surf on the, on the ride. How many people can ride this activity at once? Well, what we have here is what's called a double flow rider. So it's equivalent to two single flow riders. Um, and what we have right now is what we call an open wave or, um, or one wave. And in that case, one person goes at a time and they're able to use the whole surface when they ride. When we get a lot of people in here in, in certain times of, of the week, we put a divider down and make it back into two flow riders. And when, we have two, when we have the divider down the middle and we have two flow riders going, we can have one person on each side going at a time. What kind of boards are used for flowboarding? We have two kinds of boards. This is what we have as a body board. It looks just like a body board that most people use out in the ocean. Um, and this is mainly for laying down or being on your knees uh, and cutting and curving and doing all sorts of tricks there. And then Zach has what we call the flow board. And this is what we stand up on. You see it looks similar to a snowboard or a longboard, skateboard, um, or a wakeboard. And that makes it the cross-platform sport that we were talking about earlier. So this is what we stand up on, and we can do all sorts of tricks. Things that you see at skateboard parks or at wakeboard or snowboarding, we can do on these flow boards. Because this is like surfing in the ocean, um, do you find any sharks or fish swimming around? Well, <laughs> no. That's a great part about the flow rider, is there is no sharks. There's no salt water. We have a very controlled environment. Our water is actually heated, and it's uh, great. You don't have to swim. You don't have to get sand in your shorts. It's, it's all the good parts about surfing without the uh, nitty-gritty. Yeah, that is good. Actually, would you like to try right now? We can happen to have our swimsuits on!
wants to be a rock star She knows she's gonna go far oh. Hey, hey, lady, keep the faith I know one day you'll be a rock star And even though it's hard She's never gonna stop She's gonna be a star She's gonna be a star That was cool. Well, we were going to do a story about dirty kitchens, but instead we're going to do this. Have you ever noticed that most cereals taste like cardboard? And it's so boring. Oh, man. But not with surprise cereal. It still tastes like cardboard, but every box of cereal has a surprise. show called American Idol? No, duh. We're going to meet the winner of 2008, David Cook. Now we're here with David Cook. I just want to say congratulations on your 100th show last week. Well, thank you very much. It was, uh, it was a cool show. It was a cool moment, but, uh, we're gonna keep things going. We're kind of we're gonna to try to get to 200. So, what inspired you to start singing and writing songs? Um, I actually grew up watching my uh, my dad play guitar, and so uh, that was probably probably my biggest influence was just I don't know. Everybody wants to be like their dad, so. Cool. So you're on tour. Do you have any time to stop and see the sights? Um, on a rare occasion, yeah, we'll get to, uh, we'll get to sneak out and, and kind of see the cities we get to play, but, uh, it's, it's pretty much go, go, go all the time. So, like, we, we were in Lancaster, California tonight, we got into Sacramento today, I had just enough time to go to the mall, and then as soon as the show's over, we have to head up to Seattle. Wow. Um, so, do you, what was your favorite, do you have a favorite site? Um, favorite place that I've been so far... I loved Aspen, Colorado. Um, we played this uh, this place there called the Belly Up, and the entire kind of town is surrounded by mountains, and the air was really crisp and clear, and and uh, it was just a really beautiful place. So I'd have to say Aspen so far. Cool. My favorite song is Heroes. What do you have a favorite song? Uh, uh, of mine, um, it changes every night. I don't know. I think right now I'm, I really like playing Lie. Um, and then uh, I really like playing our single, Come Back to Me. But uh, I think if you ask me tomorrow, I might have a different answer. 
Are you working on a new album? We have actually just started writing for a new record, and uh, the goal right now is to stay on the road till the end of the year, and then 2010 will start, and we'll start writing a, or start recording another record. Cool. What are your plans when the tour's over? Uh, to keep working. Uh, once the tour is done, um, I might take a week or two to uh, try to be normal for a second, and then uh, we'll start working on another record and just doing this whole thing over again. Cool. So, you're really funny on your talk show. A ficus flows between us. The chicken's very wise. Does she, is she on tour with you? The chicken is on tour with us. Uh, she sits on, uh, usually sits on my guitar player Neil's amp during the show. Um, but with all the uh, exposure she's been getting lately, uh, I don't know if we're, we're going to be able to afford her sticking it out on the road. She's pretty expensive to keep around. Uh, so, did, did you meet her at a barn? <laughs> Uh, I, we did not meet her at a barn. Um, in fact, I don't know, I don't know where we met her. I think our light guy is friends with her and that's how she got on the road with us. Cool. What's her name again? Uh, Stage Chicken. Crazy Legs. Stage Chicken. <laughs> cool. When's the next episode of Ficus Flows Between Us? Um... You know that was a that was kind of a pilot episode, so I'd, we haven't really been picked up by any network yet. So um, there, there's no telling when another episode will come out. Hopefully soon. It'd be nice. I can't wait. <laughs> what advice do you have for me as an inspiring songwriter? Um, my advice to you would be to just have fun with it. I don't know. I, get, I I'm I'm really lucky. I get I have a job where I get to do what I love to do every day. So if you like writing, just write. Cool. Do you have any girlfriends? <laughs> I don't. No. <laughs> hey, do you want to go out for a milkshake later? Sure. Why not? Let's go. Well, <laughs> thank you, thank you for thank you the interview, thank and thank you for your time. And we'll see you at the concert tonight. So, bye.